When Lightning Comes in a Jar by, Pat by Patricia Polacco. Today my family's reunion is happening. I can hardly wait. My dad's side of the family will come soon. It's been ages since I've seen them all. Before our reunions, we're always at my granny's house. But this year, it's going to be at mine. I'm so anxious to see my cousins, especially Lydia and Sandy. They will be wearing the same colors that we wear to all our family reunions. They wore them at our last reunion. Oh, how I remember that day. Grammy and I stood in the front of her windows, waiting for my relatives to come. I can't wait to see them all, I said to her. I know, she answered. Will there be jello like there always is, I asked. Yes, she answered. And baseball croquet, like there always is? And bag races, too? And will you tell stories like you always do? We might, Grammy said, looking up at the sky. And we might catch lightning in a jar. Lightning in a jar? That was something new. And then my relatives started driving up by the carloads. One after another, finally the car I was waiting for rolled up and my five cousins piled out. Sandy, Freddie, Billy, Lydia, and Carl. Oh, Sandy, Lydia, and I squealed and ran for the porch swings just like we always did. We held hands and we pushed the swing with our bare feet. We told secrets that we had kept for a whole year. I told them. When my dad called out, who's going to help unload these baskets from the car? He shouted, we will. And we lugged baskets full and heavy to the tables in the maple grove. I wonder how many jello salads there will be, my cousin Freddie asked. Gazillions. There always are, my cousins Billy answered. Sure enough, there were gazillions. They jumped and they shook every time we bumped the table. They seemed Bet there's as many meatloafs, too, my brother chimed in. There were as many as we unpacked zillions of, un of meatloafs. And they were all different, too. Each auntie had her own recipe, including Aunt Bertha, who made one with a hard-boiled egg right in the middle. When we cut it, there was a perfect slice of egg. It looked like a giant. Our aunties and grandmas flitted about the tables like butterflies going from flower to flower. They perked up the lettuce or rearranged the tomatoes and set slices of meatloaf so they looked just perfect. When Gammy and the aunties took off their aprons, we all knew it was time to gather at the table. We all held hands. Uncle Wayland said the blessing. Then everyone sat down and dove into the food, piling it high on their plates, some as high as the haystacks. My brother Richie was sitting with some of the older girls that came with our older cousin. He was acting silly. I could tell he liked one of them. Oh, how embarrassing. When we thought we couldn't eat any more, Gammy and my aunties put on their aprons back, started getting ready for all of the pies and cakes to get out of the kitchen. There was something magical about my Gammy and her sisters this day. Like they knew something, they just weren't telling me. I did wonder how Gammy was going to catch lightning in a jar, and every so often, I'd stop and ask her how. She'd just smile and say, Easy, someday you will be a king. Next it was time for croquet, the biggest game of the day which our uncles kept interrupting with friendly quarrels about bent hoops, crooked wickets, and wanting to take three shots. We had bag races, watermelon seed spitting contests, and rides on Grandpa's draft horse. Until Grandpa waved a yardstick in the air, all of us kids dropped what we were doing, and we ran to the milkshake. We knew it was time to get measured. We did it every year. I liked looking at the marks of my gammies and sisters and brothers all in the same doorway. Some shorter than mine, hard to imagine. The ones 
it's me. It's me. Um, Bertha had gone to the house and fetched all the family portrait album. The aunties showed us old brown photos and pointed, that was their father who saved souls and a circuit preacher when he wasn't farming. And look, there was their favorite horses. Their eyes sparkled when they showed us their wedding pictures. The aunties were all married in their mother's parlor. I watched Danny to see if she would summon the lightning. It's time for a family photo, Aunt Iva called out as she jumped up and grabbed her camera. We kids didn't like this part because it meant that any dirt on our faces would be scraped off with a hanky that our aunties had spit on, especially mine. Well, everybody smile, Auntie Iva sang out. After this, the kids started to chant, stories, 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 please. Danny and her sisters and brothers started crying and snoring. Ernest told about milking cows faster than a hammer. Gammy told about how she and her sisters walked seven miles to a one-room schoolhouse over in Lock Center, and how each of them was taught in that very same school. Then there was some quiet as Aunt Ima started fanning herself. Oh, we knew she was getting ready. I remember the day I was driving the rig home from school when I came upon a real rattlesnake. We looked at one another. Rattlers weren't around in these parts, so we knew this was going to be a good story. That thing was all coiled up and shaking its tail. Not rattling sounds, something more like a loud bzzz. Well, Belle, the horse, just stood there and shook. Well, what did you do, Aunt Iva, we asked. Well, sir, I stepped out of the buggy, took my umbrella, put it with a smack in the middle of that snake where it was all coiled up, just wrapped it around that umbrella. I knew if it stuck me, I was a goner. So I picked it up. Gave the umbrella a shark jerk and flung that snake into Cecil Potter's field. And I jumped in my buggy and galloped for home. <gasps> Just like the wind. All of my aunts and uncles laughed. Then a flicker of heat lightning spread about in the horizon. The air didn't move. Was some magic going to happen? Aunt Ida fluttered her fan. We knew she was getting ready to top Aunt Iva's story. Have I ever told you the children the time I took a ride in that first new fangled motor car here in this country? No, the kids all sang out. Well, sir, it begins with Eddie Dunkel. I pot in to prove of him. No, never know how. He's a wild kid, he'd rave. Don't never want to see you with the likes of him again. Well, one day when I was walking home from a prayer meeting, he rolled up next to me driving one of the shiniest machines that I had ever seen. Aunt Ida stopped and fanned herself some more. What happened, Aunt Ida, we begged. <clears throat> well, Aunt Ida crowed. I climbed right into that thing. Eddie shifted that contraption, making a terrible sound, and the roadster almost leapt right off the ground. It went so fast, my hat flew clean off. We were going almost 40 miles an hour. We raced up Mortimer's Road, hurled around Evy Petter's barn, almost flattening the Bender sister's fruit stand, and then howled down Dietzer Road. Oh, we all gasped. And when we skidded to a stop in front of Pa's barn, there he was, just a stand in there. And she stopped again and fanned herself. <gasps> What'd he do, Aunt Hilda? Well, what happened? We all pleaded. Not a blessed thing, she answered and laughed so hard that she almost dropped her lemonade. The heat lightning flickered again and there was a low rumble of thunder off in the distance. Now I watched my grandmother. She smiled and gave me a wink. It was her turn. 
<clears throat> well, sir, Grammy began. I was but a girl, out plowing and helping plow with the field. His team could pull these rows as straight as an arrow. Then the team re reared and bolted and dragged me halfway down the field before I could free myself. And when I stood up, there was a far fierce and clattering roar in the sky above me. We all encountered it. It was like thunder and fierce lightning. She stopped. I took a sip of her lemonade. Well, was it Grammy the kids all begged, looking up and waiting for the lightning? Well, sir, I couldn't believe what I was seeing above me. I crawled to my knees. There was like a giant dragonfly spewing foul-smelling smoke and roaring, pitching, and rolling uh, ever the first ever flying machine up in this state. Oh my goodness, we clapped with delight. That would have been a perfect time for the lightning to come. But it didn't, and it was almost dark. I whispered to Grammy, what about the lightning, Angel? She adjusted her glasses and gave me a look. Have the last rays of sun left the grass, she asked. I looked real hard. Yes, yes, I said. Well then, sit down. Um, Bertha brought a wicker laundry basket full of glass candy jars and set them at Grammy's feet. Many years ago, when your aunties and uncles and I were but children, our grandpa showed us what I am about to show you. She leaned down and touched the grass, cupping something in her hand. She thought for a moment, and then she said, Shadows lengthen, the day near done, birds fly low, at setting sun. Stars will rise from earth below. In these hands, their light will glow. Come up, lightning, come up from stars. We'll snatch you up from these here jars. And she blew in her hands and let something go. It flew for a moment, then landed deep in the grass. We watched and watched, but nothing was happening. The, thund the thunder rolled just Look, cried my uncle or cousin B Billy. A small burst of starlight puffed out of the grass, then more and more drifted out of the carpet of lawn beneath our feet. Fireflies, we all called out. We grabbed the jars and dashed on to capture lightning and put it in a jar. Grandma gave me a knowing look. When everyone had gone home that night, Gammy and I sat on the porch swing together. We looked at the flickering jar, and even though the fireflies are common in Michigan on summer nights, never had I ever seen so many as I saw that night. And so long as I live, I'll believe this sound. Grammy called them all with her stories. That night seems so long ago, but the reunion is here again. My family's arriving now. My heart is racing. We'll eat scrumptious jello and meatloaf, play baseball croquet, spit watermelon seeds, and scrawl new measurements on my milk health door jam. We'll look at photo albums, we'll laugh at some and cry at others. We'll remember the stories of how Gammy the saw the first flying machines on Iva conquer the Rattler. We'll talk about Billy and how he should have been a Detroit Tiger, but he gave up his life for his country in a war far away. Then, when the sun is low and the shadows are long, we'll all sit and fan ourselves in the shade of the maple trees. Only a new crop of children will gather at our knees. My father, my grandmother, my aunties and uncles no longer are here. So now it is we who must tell their stories and bring them back. Memories. And then I will show the children the magic that my grandma showed me. I'll call the stars from beneath their feet, and as they rise to the warm night air, these children will leap as high as the cow's backs to gather the lightning. Angel. I'll send them home with full bellies, tired bones, and flickering jars on their laps. Their hearts will be overflowing, full of lightning, put there by folks who love them even before they were born. 
Gam knew this only too well. She also knew that someday they would tell their children about all of us and the magic nights when we caught lightning in a jar. Thus.